So I was just looking back on my YouTube channel to see how long I've been on YouTube. And my first video that I uploaded was in 2013. So that was like, that was like seven years ago. First video was a, a beat, yeah, a beat that I made. So it was a beat video. And I don't think I posted my first actual beat making video till a year later. Yeah, just me making beats. And I was just looking back at it and just looking how I've progressed and how the thumbnails have changed and, and how I was doing my videos and stuff. And then looking back, it's like, oof. So I was thinking, the channel's currently sitting on 5.5K. I was thinking, it's a good time, especially yeah, lock, we're in lockdown part two. I know there's gonna be a few people who wanna start or have thought about making a YouTube channel. And now, well, now's a good time to. So, I want to share some tips on how to start your YouTube channel and share with you what I've learned through the years and give you some tips, give you five tips on how to start a YouTube channel in 2020 and grow beyond. What's going on? It's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Well. So in today's video, I'm going to share some tips on how to get started on your YouTube channel and share what you have with the world. Lockdown part two, so we've got some time on our hands to put some work in if that's what you want to do. So I'm just going to share with you five things to take into consideration when you're starting your YouTube channel. But first, before we do that, I need to shout out my two new subscribers. Shout out Cliff Wallace Music Group and Esh J. Thank you both for subscribing, I appreciate that. It means a lot. And thank you for being a part of the community. It's much appreciated. Favourite comment for this week is coming from EAB Prod. Yep, that's exactly how it goes sometimes. You watch one video and then it leads on to others, which is exactly what I want to happen. So yeah. Thank you for your comment, bro. I appreciate you. I hope you've all hit that notification bell as well so you'd have seen your shout outs today. All right, enough of that. Let's dive into the video. So one of the first things to ask yourself is why are you doing YouTube? Why do you want to be sharing videos on YouTube? Write this down or just keep a mental note of why you're doing this because when, it start, when you start to burn out or you feel uninspired or unmotivated, then at least you can go back to it and get yourself back on the right track because you remember the reason why you, you started this channel in the first place. Tip two, what is it you're gonna share on YouTube? How are you gonna provide value? It could be through you doing clothing hauls, shopping hauls, vlogging, whatever you decide is okay because someone will find value from what you're doing. It doesn't always have to be tutorials. They don't always have to be you showing how to. If you're providing a bit of entertainment for someone, then that's bringing value. So decide on what your channel is gonna be about. I, I hear it a lot as well. You should niche down and have like a specific thing that your channel's about, which is, it's true, but I also believe you are niche. You you just being yourself and doing whatever you do to get through the day, building your brand, your business, that is a niche in itself. That's you creating content. So I feel like it's okay to have different videos because for me, I can't just be making beat videos, beat making videos every day because I just get bored of that. I feel like you need to have, for me, I just like to have different things going on. I can't just do beat making videos or, or just tutorials on Logic Pro because I just get bored of that and I think that will come through in my videos as well so that's why I like to keep things moving and trying different things and so and I feel like it gives you a reason to come back to my, my, my channel as well but if you decide to do something that's completely different to what you normally post have make sure that it ties in so when someone subscribes to your channel for a video that they've watched they're kind of expecting to see more of them type of videos but if you want to incorporate other things then do that you just have to find a way to make it all tie in and that could be through vlogging or just doing live videos because you're a brand so whatever you do is part of your brand it's part of your channel you're going to need a channel name which is tip free channel aesthetics channel name brand your brand name choose a name that you're going to be happy with you can change it i started off with case wise and then went on to kc sounds i wanted kc beats but someone had that so i went for kc sounds because i felt like it i felt like beats were kind of just it would limit me. So if I wanted to branch out and do media, have like a media company or something, when KC Sounds would sound a lot better as a company. Well, that's what I thought anyway, so I've, I've gone with that. You're gonna need a banner. If you're good at graphic design, you can create your own banner. Or you can go to somewhere like Fiverr.com, which I use a lot for logos. I've used them for, for my banner. For, I've used them before for artwork, single EP artwork. The only thing is you have to go through and find out who's right for you, obviously, because there's a lot of people in there providing a service. So just go through, find who you gel with, contact them, ask them to make you a banner. You can put in your banner if you're having specific upload time. So, so when someone goes onto your channel, they'll be able to see when to expect videos, which is something I'll talk about later on. So with your channel aesthetics, you can choose probably, I'd say probably like three colors, your favorite colors that will tie in with your brand. 
maybe two or three fonts that you use all the time. Looking back at my old videos, um, the way I used to do my thumbnails, there was just all over the shop. And it's something that I had to I had to go through and learn because I was just finding my style, finding what worked for me. So just find what works for you. Also, the pick that you use for your channel, if you can use that across other platforms, then that would be good because when someone sees that, automatically they'll know that it's you. So you don't have different pictures on all your socials and on your YouTube channel. Everything's just tying in. Everything's just tying in, which looks a lot better. The sections on your YouTube channel, if you haven't got no videos already, it's gonna look quite bare. But once you start uploading your videos, you can change the sections, create playlists, and make it look aesthetically pleasing. So when someone comes onto your page, it looks good. And they probably wanna stick around and see what you got in your other playlist, and then before you know it, you got a new subscriber. So how are you gonna record? How are you gonna record yourself? You can use your iPhone, you can use your Android. Camera quality is good nowadays, so there's no reason why you can't. If you're just starting off as well, don't get tired in, or don't get bogged down into thinking, oh, I need to have the best camera. I've spoken to a few people who wanted to start making videos and they're straight away thinking that they've got to go out there and get the best equipment. It's not about the equipment, it's about, it's about just getting started and building yourself up. If you want to go out there and spend, uh, you, your budget allows you to spend a whole heap to get the best and latest equipment, then that's fine. I just think it's better when you start small with almost nothing and then you grow because people like to see progression. I do. I like to see the people progressing, starting from nothing and then working their way up because, yeah, I, for me, I just like an underdog. I like to see people progressing. If you want to go out there and spend a whole heap of money on new equipment, then you can do that. It's up to you. Right now, I'm using a Sony A5, A500, thanks to my stepdaughter. Cool little camera. Doesn't have no mic input, so I've got like a, a workaround where I'm plugged, plugged a shotgun mic into my iPhone and I use that and just sync the audio, which is another thing you need to bear in mind because good quality cameras, pictures looking good, quality is good and all that, but the audio is weak, then a lot of people are gonna just click off your video and, and find another one because the audio isn't matching up to the video quality. I've done a couple of mic reviews just lately on smartphone microphones and studio microphones, which you can use for podcasting or recording YouTube videos. So check those videos out as well if that's something you're interested in. I'll drop some links below in the description box. Yes, they're affiliate links, but they don't cost you no more. It just helps me grow my business and grow this channel. If you're thinking of capturing your screen recordings, like you're doing tutorials and you want to show what you're doing on screen, so you want to call that. There's free software out there that I started off using. So the one that I started using first was screencast or matic Allows you to record 15 minutes of your screen. I can't remember if it has a watermark in it. I think it did have a watermark. There's loads of others out there that you could use. Do a bit of research, find some, or find one that works for you. It's all about what works for you, what makes your life easier. What you will notice is when you start re recording videos and you start editing, you might try a software that you, you just don't get on with. You have to look around or you do some research to see which ones are being recommended and ones that you like. So you're gonna notice that when you use certain equipment, you're gonna outgrow it, you're gonna get bored of it. You might not even like the way it works. Going back to me using Screencast, I'm at it. I then moved on to Camtasia, which is cool. You can screen record and you can also edit the video so that you can put them on YouTube. But what I found with Camtasia is it crashed a lot. I found that it got a bit clunky. It felt a bit slow. So I done a bit of research. Because it's so slow, I started to get annoyed because I wasn't able to edit my videos fast enough for me to upload to YouTube. I spoke to my wife, she said, why, why don't you just research and see if there's any others out there? So I did. I don't know why I didn't think of that anyway. So I researched and I found one called DaVinci Resolve 16. This hair is absolutely amazing and it's free. If you're looking for some video editing software that a lot of pros use, if you, pay, you use the paid version, I'm using the free version, which is cool. And it's quick as well, absolutely love it. So I feel like now, nah. obviously there's a, there's a new workaround for me to try and get used to that because I've been using Camtasia for so long. But yeah, I highly recommend DaVinci Resolve. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by them or nothing. And if they've seen this video and want to sponsor me, then that's fine. So DaVinci Resolve video editing software. So that was the full thing. How you're going to record yourself, how you're going to record your audio, uh, and how you're going to edit your videos to put them on YouTube. Tip five. The fifth thing that I want to share with you, uh, plus I've got a bonus, so stick around to the end. The fifth thing is schedule. Are you going to have a schedule? Which is something I mentioned earlier for the banner for your YouTube channel. Have a schedule because you're just starting off. You could do one video a week or two videos a week, depending on what your channel's about. If you're trying to grow, then two videos would be good a week. But like I said, start off with one video, get used to recording yourself. I've got a video on how to be confident on camera. So check that out if you're feeling a bit unconfident talking to the camera. A few tips that will help you to build your confidence so that you're able to talk on camera and get your points across. 
So going back to the schedule, be consistent with it. If you're gonna post on a Saturday, try and make sure that you're posting every Saturday or whatever day that you choose. So people will know when you're gonna put up a video. Currently, my video's a little bit sporadic, but I have done in the past, stuck to uh, specific days, which was Tuesday and Saturday, which, which worked really well for me. And I managed to get a few videos out and build my subscribers, which I've seen in my analytics which is another thing you're going to get used to as well just looking at your analytics and see what videos are helping you to grow and boost your channel so my bonus tip for you is don't compare your first video to someone else's 200th video 250th 300th 500th video just don't do it to yourself it's not going to do you any favors just con just be laser focused in what you're doing and just concentrate on that. That is the quickest way for you to just give up. And once you start comparing yourself, that's gonna be the quickest way for you to feel like there's no point in carrying on doing your YouTube videos. You've gotta be passionate about what you're doing. You've gotta you've got love what you're doing because it's, it's gonna come through on the camera. It's, people are definitely gonna see that you're just doing it for doing its sake. So yeah, that's my tip for you. Do not compare yourself to others because you are you, you are unique, you're special. And what you've got is a gift. And share it, share it with us. We wanna see it. Your first few videos are gonna look a bit, sound a bit off. Unless you come out the blocks firing, like you're just, you're made for this. And you just come out firing and all your videos just look superb. Your confidence is just through the roof. Then that's good, that's good for you. But when I look back on some of my first videos, <laughs> but one thing's for sure, I've stayed true to myself, which is another thing that I forgot to mention. Just, just be you, stay true to yourself. Because when you look back on your videos, you'll be thinking, hmm, I was acting a bit there. Or when you do that, you ain't got to remember how to be. If people don't like the way you talk, they don't like your accent, then there's millions of other YouTubers or videos that they can go and check out if they don't like you. But people will resonate with you. And if they do, you know that they're genuine and that they're coming to, to be part of what you're offering. They, they appreciate it. So stay true to yourself, keep doing your videos, and watch your channel grow. If you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up in the DM on Insta. Always happy to help. DMs always open. If, the, if you like this video today, hit that like button. If you like this sort of videos, there's going to be a lot more videos on growing your YouTube channel. I'm going to have like a little playlist so you can come back to if there ain't one already. Just sharing tips on how to grow because, like I said, I'm on 5.5 at the moment, 5.5k. It's growing nicely. There's a few things that I'm doing to grow the channel and I want to share them. If you like these videos, type of videos hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell as well so you get notified anytime i put up a new video as per usual i appreciate your time